All right, three, two, one. Oh shoot, Kevin the Cube. Yo, what's happening to Kevin? Oh, look at that, dude. That actually looks so sick. Today, I'm gonna go over the basics of animations inside of UEFN. The first thing we're gonna do, actually, is figure out what we wanna have animated. So basically, this could be anything. It could be a prop, it could be like a character model, whatever. I'm gonna use a cube just for today's tutorial. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw a cube out here onto the plane. So once we got our object, I'm gonna actually resize this a little bit, make it nice and easy to see. And once we have the object that we want to have an animation on, what we're going to do is actually go down to the bottom here. All we're going to do is right click anywhere here on the bottom. And then we're going to go over to cinematics and click level sequence. You can go ahead and name this whatever you want. I'm going to call it cube animation. And then we're going to go ahead and open that up. Now once we're inside, we're going to go ahead and click this green track button. Go to actor to sequence, and then you want to look up the name of the item that you want to move. So for me, I'm going to be moving this cube. I already have it named for cube right here. I'm going to go ahead and click it. And as you can see, we have it selected right here. So now we have the cube all hooked up into our level sequencer. Now this level sequencer is super important for UEFN. There is so much stuff you guys can do inside of it. Today we're just going to be doing a simple animation and show you the basics of it, but there is so much stuff. It's literally like one of the most powerful tools inside of UEFN. It's really good. The first thing we're going to do, as you can see, this is our timeline right here. You can actually make this longer if you want to make it a longer animation. If you want to know how to scroll inside this timeline, you just have to hold right click. You can move left or right. So on the far left, this green line, this is going to be the start of our little animation. So we're going to move this little scroller wheel all the way down to the very start at zero, zero. This is going to be the start of our animation. So I think for today's animation on this cube, I want to have it roll over just like Kevin the cube. So what I'm going to do is choose a starting position. I like this position that we have right here. I'm going to go down to the transition tab right here. And uh, all I'm going to do is select this little keyframe and make sure I'm on zero, zero at the start of the animation. Now I'm going to go ahead and click this key. Boom. And check it out. It made three separate keys for our location, rotation, and scale. So now what we're going to do is just scroll forward a little bit in this animation. I'm going to go about probably halfway here from like the middle, whatever. And this is where we actually get to animate our object. I'm actually going to have this rotate on its side. So let's go ahead and flip it this way. It's going to... Flip. I'm also going to move it forward, probably like right here. So once you find a spot that you want to have part of the animation, you're going to go ahead and over on this transform thing again, you're going to click another key. Boom. And now guys, the cool thing is you can actually test what this looks like so far. So if I go ahead and uh, left click anywhere on this timeline and I just kind of scroll through, I could see what happens with this animation in real time. It's really cool. So if I need to make any type of adjustments, I can always do that. Now let's scroll a little bit further up in our timeline because we have a little bit of space until this is over. So now what I want to have happen next is have it kind of like spin a little bit. So I'm going to actually rotate this. Let me turn off the grid snap here at the top. I'm just going to rotate my cube a little bit and uh, maybe I'll make it um, jump up in the air just a little bit. Now I'm going to scroll up to the, like the middle. I'm going to raise this a little bit. I'm going to put another transform key. And now I'm going to scroll to the very end. And I'm going to choose our final destination for this cube. I'm going to make it land back down and click transform. So on the bottom left, we actually have a play button. If you want to watch it all smooth, I'm just going to scroll back and uh, select the very start. And now we're going to click play and see this animation. So it rolls over, does a little spin, and then it kind of jumps. Yep. Oh, that's so cool. So this is like a very basic use of the animation. There's so much you can do with this device. Now, I haven't actually messed around with it myself, but I'm going to link down below. There's a great tutorial showing how you can animate an actual character model using a skeleton. Inside that video, it kind of shows you how to like animate, you know, like an object's like hands or like its face. So if you're looking for that type of animation, you guys can go click that link down below. I'm not an expert on it. This is the basic stuff that I know how to do. But yeah, once you have this animation, if we go back to our content browser, it's going to be saved right behind me. It's going to be saved as this cube animation. So if we want this to actually play in game, we kind of have to set this up and get it playing somehow. What I'm going to do is go to my devices. 
And for today's video, I'm just gonna use a button for this. I'll make it super simple. We're also gonna be dragging in the cinematic sequence device into our project. And this is a pretty simple part, guys. Now we just have to put it all together. If we head over to the right-hand side of our screen where it says sequence, I'm gonna go ahead and click on this. And we're gonna select that cube animation that we just created, boom. So now that is hooked up into our cinematic sequence device. There's a couple settings on here. You can have it loop if you want to. Um, you know what? I, I think we'll keep it on loop. We'll see what it looks like with loop. And then the last thing to do over where it says play function, we're going to click this little plus button. And then we're going to actually select whatever we want to have trigger this animation. Like I mentioned, we threw down a button. So I'm going to go ahead and use this marker tool. I'm going to click on our button and then I'm going to click this little drop down window and do on interact. And just to kind of sum up what I just did here. So pretty much when you interact with this button, it's going to set off the sequencer and our sequencer has that animation already loaded up into it. So now if we load up into game, all we do is click the button and it's going to show us this awesome animation. All right, guys, here we are inside game. So we got our button right here and the cube is right in front of us. Let's go ahead and click this and see what it looks like. All right, three, two, one. Oh shoot, Kevin the Cube! Yo, what's happening to Kevin? Oh, look at that dude. That actually looks so sick. And then I have the loop turned on, so it's gonna obviously, you know, keep it in a loop, keep replaying it. It's pretty cool. You can actually make some pretty sick stuff with this. All right, I added a couple things to our original animation. I added a couple friends. We got the circle. We also got this triangle here. And I wanna show you guys a cool trick with the level sequencer. So if we go ahead and double click our cube animation level sequence, I'm gonna double click it. So we're back in our sequencer itself. We got the timeline here and a cool little trick. You can actually add multiple different actors all on the same like level sequencer. So as you guys can see on the far left, I have a cone, I have a cube and also have that sphere. So just like the cube, basically everything that we did in here, I, you know, put the keyframes, we animated everything, we just kind of skip frames and, and, you know, click transform. You basically do the same thing over and over for different shapes. And um, what this does, you could pretty much have multiple things happening all in one animation. So if I scroll all the way down to zero, zero and click play, just check out our objects. They're all going to move all together on the same timeline and they're all gonna do their own custom animations. You know, you could spend a lot of time in here perfecting it and, you know, making it do exactly what you want, but I think it's pretty cool that you can have multiple tracks all on the same level sequencer. This also works in game. So when you click this button, all three of these things are gonna go off when you click that button. It's all in the same cinematic uh, sequence device. But that is pretty much the basics of animating objects inside a UEFN. I want you guys to leave me some feedback down below of what tutorial you wanna see next because I have a lot of ideas and I just don't know which ones I should be posting first. So if you guys have a question about UEFN, drop it down below and I will make a video on it hopefully very soon. But that's gonna wrap up this one if you guys enjoyed it make sure you guys smash a like share it with a friend good luck in uefn and i'll see you guys all in the next video peace out everybody